What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode review for Summertime Rendering. Uh, this is episode 17, and with me, as always, I have Blue Spade. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, this... <laughs> I would say there are a lot, you know, a lot of stuff uh, that gets, I, I don't know, that gets revealed and, uh, well, let me start over. Uh, well, f first off, we, you know, we do see that Sh Shenfei is, you know, of course, finally getting some rest after um, literally looping out, like, or how many times he he has uh, for whatever how long. Mm. And uh, dur during that time, I think uh, we see a conversation between uh, Mio and her shadow uh, well pretty much uh shadow mio just pretty much calling her calling her out for being uh the way she is um uh, basically just calling her like uh well just literally being uh in ushio's shadow throughout her entire life yeah uh she's kind of like uh revealing i guess her insecurities that she doesn't feel uh that she uh, feels insignificant, I guess, in comparison to her sister, uh, and mm -hmm. that she feels like she's really different from her sister. Um, and also, of course, her shadow like threatens to reveal, uh, uh, like I guess, her feelings for uh, uh, for Shinpei. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just feels like the conversations between her and her shadow, like her shadow is always like, uh, j you know, because I mean they're the same person, so she's just uh, uh, she's just kind of you know like revealing all her weaknesses and you know all these insecurities she has uh it, it's kind of interesting in that regard and like the i guess the i don't mm -hmm. know if you say the relationship the two of them have yeah i mean i'm just you know i'm curious to like a, what what uh mio shadow's objective is i mean she's not working yeah. with hind anymore but like you know she she's really insistent on wanting you know her real self to like to be you know, I don't know, just, you know, to just go beyond what, you know, what she originally is. Yeah, and I mean, that could be something that maybe Mio wants, it actually does want to do, but she can't bring herself mm -hmm. to do it or something. Yeah, and and also uh, what happens like, uh, uh, like later that night, uh, we see Nezu um, uh, walking out of the school, heading back to his place, and Ushio ends up following him and reveals that Nezu has been uh, keeping the shadow of his wife cap captive for for whatever how long he has, and he until then like he never had uh, he didn't have it in, in in himself to really kill her at the time, but you know with everything that that has happened uh, you know over the last whatever how many days while well, during Shinpei's looping, I guess he I guess he finally. Uh, brings it upon himself to finally kill her once or for, once and for all even though like uh, ushio initially objects that that she'll be able to to cut off uh, the link to Heine, uh ne nez states that you know it's still going to be a shadow and of course he know he reveals that the shadow is the one that killed his uh, real wife and then replaced her in the first place so he decides you know of course he decides to just like I said, take it upon himself to fin finish off the shadow of his wife once and for all. And then, of course, uh, Ushio decides to agrees to let him do so. Yeah. Um, I think we also forgot to mention there at the very beginning of the episode, too, there's actually a scene between Ushio and uh, uh, Hizuru uh, where she they kind of go over that flashback we saw again. Um, yeah. Where, of course, Nezu was involved in this as well. Uh, but uh, we find out because uh, if you remember, there was that piece of uh, like I guess a piece of Heine that kind of broke off from her, like and and uh, went away somewhere. And uh, it's speculated that that could have been uh, Shadow Ushio or how she was created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, it. I mean, we we do know that it, it is. It's this. It's the right eye that. Shinpei is using, yeah. But I, I'm still curious of like how it, how Shinpei really even got it in the first place. I mean, back like it it literally happens like in the prologue of the very first episode where we could assume that is the Shadow Mio that gave uh, Shin, Shinpei uh, Shinpei the, you know the Shadow Eye in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I guess she. she 
imparted a piece of herself into Shinpei's right eye, which is probably how he got in the first place. But of course, yeah. like it, it could be like a like a ver you know this version of the Shadow Usho that might have uh, traveled from the future of sorts. I don't know how. Like, it, it, I mean, it's possible. Uh, it, yeah, that's probably it, what based I think. On the way, like, most they likely keep traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so it, eventually, like uh, the, I think we do get another conversation between So and his father, yeah. um, where uh, you know. He reveals that uh, So's mother uh, really died from heart failure, and pretty much lied about it. Uh, lied about uh, giving her like a, a heart transplant. Um, when in reality, you know, they they've they've had the shadow version of uh, of his mother, you know, the entire time. Yeah. Um, well, and, and we also get a follow up with that um, nurse that we saw in the last episode where she. Uh, meets up with uh, Shide and uh, of course now it, it is pretty much the scene confirms that now Shide knows that uh, Shinpei and the others are, are still alive um, so I guess we can assume that he's he's planning something to uh, uh, to try to kill Shinpei and uh, and yeah. the others yeah and also he ends up absorbing uh, the nurse shadow to pretty much regenerate uh whatever part of himself he he lost to in, you know pretty much encase himself in shadows again because <laughs> yeah. I, it's pretty clear that you know this isn't i don't know if this is an actual real person or if it's an actual shadow that's uh that's working with Heine. oh you mean he, the nurse yeah yeah well the, the guy well shide like we, we we see his actual like um you know human oh. arm but yeah you no know, he he nur nurse to uh, to bring, I guess, to regenerate his shadow parts. Well, um, to, to encase I mean, I mean, from again. what we know, the shadows are all based on real people. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think Shinpei, or not Shinpei, but uh, Shide must be, you know, somebody, uh, some human um, that yeah, I, we probably don't know about. But I mean, he's, uh, they, they have alluded to before that he was someone from the past, but we don't really know that much else about him. Yeah. Um, so, but it, it eventually like uh, uh, brings us to morning, and Shinpei, uh, of course, after have, you know finally getting some sleep after all that, he, I guess, he senses that uh, what was it? Um, his looping ability has has distanced and, uh, itself even further from him after he you know, had some time to you know, I. I I guess you know he he did since since he didn't end up dying from uh, after that last loop, uh, he mm -hmm. feels like you know he's he's a little bit safe enough to loop back again if something were to happen. Yeah, which I feel like is is eventually going to happen. He'll probably have to end up looping again for one reason or another, since he yeah. mentioned before he has like one more loop. So that's probably going to happen before the end of the series, if I could guess. Yeah. So the majority of the second half of the episode is um, Shinpei and the rest of the others uh, decide to split up and decide to hunt down some shadows that are um, that that are hunting down uh, some actual real people that they're, they're, they're going to use as sacrifices for the ritual. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have as much luck because several of the shadows have managed to kill several people that they're trying to save. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, like, um, sh fortunately, Shinpei and Ushio do manage to save a couple of kids uh, that are being attacked by a shadow version of their teacher that they met uh, years back. And we do get to see like a little flashback of that uh, when Ushio and Shinpei were uh, were elementary school kids at the time. And they had this like interaction with, uh, with their teacher after Ushio was being teased for for looking more like a foreigner because of her blue eyes and her blonde hair yeah um yeah we kind of we get a little bit of, of information about their relationship uh, between them and and this teacher and of course and uh we find out that this teacher of course became a shadow as well and uh she was about to uh you know she was attacking these kids uh but and of course they end up uh, you know getting her before she can do anything to the kids mm -hmm. yeah and and of course um they 
uh, they tell the kids to pretty much, like I guess, uh, send them back to the school where where they're using as a hideout. But of course, they don't tell them that their actual teacher has has died, you know, f uh, from the shadow. Um, so so eventually, like uh, they they do end up regrouping for uh, with the re remainder of of uh, the other members of the group, which. Of course, they reveal they don't really have as much success, uh, you know, as as uh, Ushio, Ushio and Shinpei did. And of course, they reveal that most of the people on the island have already gone missing or have already been killed. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't remember how, how they uh, they they decide to. Uh, well, Shinpei goes decides to uh, talk to the priest at the shrine. And I forget exactly like why he decides to do this um it, well he he finds out that he he initially wanted to meet this priest yeah. um back before he he died the first time and it was like so like it was that of course that was that scene where um uh he, he and Hizuru ended up dying from the shadow meal because they wanted to meet with this priest in the first place but they couldn't because of you know uh, because oh, of them yeah that's right um, dying from you know, the first place yeah <clears throat> so and, and of course, like there was another occasion in which uh, Shinpei wanted to meet this priest, but uh, unfortunately, that the whole situation uh, with the, um, you know, with with the you know, with the whole island massacre happening during the festival, he wasn't able to do that either. So, mm -hmm. it, I, I think you know, so he finally manages to meet with this priest uh, all alone, like um, you know, cl you know, cleaning the shrine, but it's. I think it's you know there's something suspicious about this priest you know after all this time. Yeah, I haven't really thought about it that much, but yeah, I think the I think the priest is definitely involved in some way, um, and and uh, not just because like you know we haven't really seen too much of him, uh, but also because uh, in a few episodes ago when we saw like a brief, uh, I guess one of those like a brief flashback we uh, where they were talking about like who Shide might have been and it looked like he was some kind of a Shinto priest. Um, so I wonder if he had, he might have some connection to the, the current priest. It's, I mean, I mean, it's possible because, because the whole, like, um, you know, wh where they were keeping all, all the dead bodies for the rit ritual happened, uh, up, you know, up on that same, at that same place where Shinpei is meeting the priest. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you think about it, there's a, there's a few suspicious things in regards to, uh, in regards to the priest and i mean like i get what, what do you think about mystery uh stories like it's always the person who's doesn't really show up that much and doesn't really seem that relevant that might end up being like one of the main culprits so i wonder if that might be the case here because we haven't really seen the priest that much at all and uh, it, it just kind of makes you wonder if he might be like one of the main people like kind of pulling the strings behind this whole thing um there was another thing that i forgot uh that i never brought up yeah it's um it, it was during like uh, one of the episodes uh, uh it was one of the flashback episodes uh when Hizuru and uh, her brother were were still kids at the time there was an interaction uh, between a young Hizuru and this and the same priest oh, yeah. but she she displayed some sort of uncomfortableness uh while she was around him so it's leading mm. me to believe that i mean you know it's it, part you know for one obvious reason is because you know Hizuru has like you know has been interacting uh, with Heine around that time, and she obviously knows what shadows look like, um, you know, back back when she was a kid. So wh when she was interacting with, I think no, not just this one, but then there was that um, I think it was episode six where we when we finally get the proper introduction to Hizuru, where she meets this same exact priest during uh, Ushio's funeral, and she also displayed some feelings of like uh you know animosity or just just feeling some uncomfortableness around him yeah yeah i definitely think the priest is gonna end up being some kind of a uh you know he he might be like one of the main villains or something even um so i, I guess we'll have to see though um but yeah i th i thought this was an okay episode uh it was a little bit slower than usual uh just because like a lot of it was well mostly i guess the second half uh, was a lot of them just kind of, you know, investigating, uh, walking around these places, like investigating the shadows. Um, and then that whole thing with their their teacher 
Um, it was interesting, but it felt kind of, I don't know, like kind of a, a bit of a deviation from what's going on in the main plot, I guess. It, it was a little bit weird. I, I think I think the best I think the best parts in this episode were, were the, you know, the character moments uh, with Nezu and, of course, Mio and her shadow. Yeah, I did like that. I, I did like that. And I thought it developed it. It did develop Nezu a little bit in that regard. Um, so, yeah, I, I like those parts about it. Um, but yeah, I guess you could say this is a blur, somewhat of a more character focused episode because it um, it kind of focuses more on just uh, some of the, you know, some of the characters and um, giving some of them a little bit more backstory and um, especially uh, Nezu. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't really have too much else to say about it. I, I don't know if you have anything else to say. Yeah, it's I mean, we're, well, um, I guess this is definitely building up to the finale of the series. I think we, mm. I think what was, dude, this is 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. We have about six more episodes left of the show, yeah. so oh, oh, hopefully, you know that um, this new upcoming, uh, you know, finale is going to pay off in a big way. Yeah, I definitely think in the next episode there's going to be potentially a pretty big reveal about the priest, because um, I, I, I really, now that I think more about it, I'm very suspicious of him. Um, so I, I kind of am curious as to what he's up to. Uh, I feel mm -hmm. like. The conversation that uh, Shinpei is going to have with him is going to, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if it would end up killing Shinpei, but I think something big is going to happen. Like you know, he's he might find himself in a trap or something like that. I just don't have a good feeling about it. Like I, I feel like you know that maybe that's Shinpei might be walking into some kind of a trap uh, if the priest I is mean, you, a villain. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, even if something bad goes down, Shinpei. Um, and I will still be able to loop, loop safety, yeah. sa safe, uh, ba based on how, how long he's, you know, uh, how much time he's had since the last loop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that all being said, guys, until next time, we will see you all later.